Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, my guest is a true veteran of the adult industry. He has been in the industry possibly longer than I have, though he might have a little dispute for that. We are talking, of course, about the one and only David Lord. <sighs> the class come high. How are you? Good. So, how long have you been in the industry? Uh, I. I've been in the industry since I was 18. My whole adult life, okay. I, I've been in the industry. And there was a point in time, I think I was 17, 16 or 17. And back in the day when you, you were a rock and roller, uh, you know, or trying to be a rock and roller, um, you telemarketed, right? So you sold pins and toners and all that bullshit. And you got up at 6 a.m. and we're fucking in some phone room trying to sell shit, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's and, nothing that says rock and roll more than telemarketing. More than getting up at 6 a.m. <laughs> at 6 a.m. And, and telemarketing. Uh, and I saw an ad for um, uh, telemarketing porn. I'm like, oh, that's fucking cool. So I went and I didn't, oh, I don't have my ID on me. And they're like, all right, come in, come in tomorrow. We'll hire you, blah, 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 blah. And then like two days later, like, yeah, dude, you got to go. You're not even 18. <laughs> you have to be 18 to sell this shit. Um, and then uh, when I was 18, I saw another ad in the LA Weekly, I don't know if anyone remembers that magazine or that paper. It's still out, you know. LA Weekly, really? It exists, yeah. No, get the fuck out, yeah, really? Yeah, it does. What do you do with the LA Weekly now? Because it used to be like, you, you see the shows. bottom of your gerbil page. <laughs> yeah, it's like all the pet people, gerbil. really. Like, yeah. We it still exists. Used, it's, it, what, but it, is it like movies or shows or nothing? It's like Art, articles on artic LA. Okay. Um, it has like lots of ads. Right. Um, I think it probably looks very much the same as same. it did before. It's just Maybe thinner. Probably thinner. Yeah. yeah. Thinner. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Well, they used to have used to instead of going to in, like one of the websites, used to just go in the back of the recycler or LA Weekly or whatever to find jobs. And there was one job in there, again, telemarket adult movies. And again, yes. And uh, I sold videotapes to video stores. And f uh, the funny story, it's been told before. So there is a Guns N' Roses song by the name of My Michelle. Mm -hmm. And the way it starts out was, Daddy works in porno now that Mommy's not around. She used to love her heroin, but now she's underground. That's the, the lyric. The daddy that works in porno uh, uh, his name was Harry Young mm -hmm. and his daughter Michelle Young was the Michelle and my Michelle so that guy from that song hired me to sell videos to video stores and shit and and that started the adventure of porn wow so what was your first day on the job like like tell me like exact like so you would call up so yes dis okay. distributors and be like video stores bookstores mm -hmm. you know like, there hey, was I got there this was a great, lot there was like anal gangbang series that you <laughs> just gotta have yes yes um, basically um, it was a numbers game so you would have lists you would have sheets you you would also create and generate accounts right and we used to use these three by five cards or four by six and we'd have a alphabetized and you'd come in and it'd be a small room smaller than this table probably about this big. Yeah, from up there to there. Cubby hole. Mm -hmm. Right? And there were tons of them. And you would call up client one. Hi, so-and-so. Is so-and-so in? Yes. Cool. Let me talk to him. Can I send you out some literature? Are you familiar with my product? The two main companies I worked for when I first got in were Aero Film and Video, Lou Perino and the Perinos, which were the last of the Italian mob mm -hmm. kind of thing from the 70s. Mm -hmm. They did the deep throat and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So it was those guys. And then it was um, uh, Elliot Siegel uh, over at Western Visuals. Mm -hmm. So they were known companies, right? And you had known products. Um, over at Western Visuals, I'll use Black Orchid, which was Michael Nin's very first movie that he ever did. And I'd call up video store after video store after video store, bookstore after bookstore. If you didn't make 100 calls in your day, you didn't have a good day. So you would just pump product out. New releases every month, get them on automatic. Um, you know, did they take big box or small box? VHS. Beta. I, I just, I, I, when I got in was the tail end of the beta. So I have actually sold porno on beta. 
Wow. Fucking, I'm so fucking old and so <laughs> fucking mad. And um, yeah, that's what we did. We sold, we sold to video stores and video distributors. And then at some point I got into um, CD-ROMs. So Private USA was hiring a sales hiring a salesman for their CD-ROM division. And that's just like the early 90s. And then they uh, they decided, hey, so what's going on in the market? And I'm like, DVD is going to be the next big thing. And they believed me. <laughs> I mean, you were right. I was right. Yeah. I was right. Uh, so I produced the third ever adult DVD ever produced, uh, which was Private Pyramid. Um, so the the whole it was basically me uh a gentleman uh by the name of jim monroe may he rest in peace he just died recently uh and alan over at vca so jim was at vivid i was at private and alan was over at vca and we were the first three dvds wow so sales morphed into dvd which morphed into directing so to, what were you doing when the internet came along? Because I know there was okay, a lot of so DVD inter- companies that it, were like, this it, is not, it, this is well, a fad. Like, I, I was over at Wicked. and So were you directing already? No, by I wasn't directing. By okay. Then. I had, um, I was over at Private and I literally sent a fax over to Steve Ornstein and Joy King saying, a fax, right? <laughs> Fucking fax. <laughs> sent a fax. Uh, I sent a fax over, uh, was basing my resume and there weren't that many people. They were looking for someone and there Mm. was maybe a handful of people that understood how the functionality of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he hired me and, uh, I was over there, uh, doing all of his DVD stuff. Uh, you know, we did dream quest and it was huge he called that me that was the jenna jameson movie. yeah the last jenna jameson movie yeah i caught i just caught the cut that's that was my entry point mm-hmm. was dream quest so fucking he kept calling me every day sold another ten thousand. this is 18 bucks a piece so he's just like going you're my guy yeah like you're bringing me so much money right now yeah so it was like another ten thousand. we sold another thirty thousand this month it, it, i think the last legitimately probably about 120, 130,000 pieces at about 18 bucks. You do the math. I'm not doing the math. <laughs> a lot of fucking money. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so we just, we, and, and it was such a great gig because great brand. And I got to push the envelope. Like I basically didn't have much of a budget and just kind of, here I got a cool idea let me do this and they're like okay and then let's get more BTS and I would get BTS guys shooting stuff and and all that and here's a cool packaging idea and and I remember I had to explain to Steve Ornstein why he needed to do 5.1 surround sound right (laughs) because you need 5.1 surround sound in your porn it was very decadent back then Um, and I took him into a, a sound stage and you know, like you know, mixing boards and mm-hmm. all that shit. And I go, this is what your product sounds like. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, my name's Brad Armstrong. And blah 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 blah. And then said, this is what it could sound like. It went boom, and it just oh, sounded amazing. Yeah. He did the Foley track. He did all that stuff. Uh, anyway, point is, it was huge. It was big, and I was fucking cocky as hell. And the internet just just started. And they wanted to dump a bunch of money into it. And I'm like, he was, he was, he was 10 years too early to, hmm. the, to the game. Interesting. Right. So internet was there, but it just, it wasn't making money. It wasn't as popular. Like DVDs were popular. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, fast forward 10 years or whatever, DVDs are like a thing of the past and it's all about internet. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he, you know, he, uh, that, that's, that's, that was the, the, the revenue stream that kept the movies going. Right. Right. It wasn't hard goods anymore. It was, you know, internet. Yeah. I mean, cause when the internet first started, you know, we had dial up and the connection was very slow. So that's why, God. 
we actually, my mother did so well because she was mostly a photographer. Mm -hmm. So pictures did great on the yeah. internet because that was pretty much the only thing you could download. Video was like, <laughs> yes, it, there was no that. streaming. You no. had to download. It would take you forever. No, no. I mean, I remember sitting there impatiently waiting for one photo <laughs> yeah. download. Yeah, it's, it's like little squares. Ding, ding, like, ding, 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 And ding, just ding. sitting there for <laughs> 10 minutes and be like, fucking hell. Oh, so that's, God. so it was perf the perfect mm -hmm. um, environment for Sue's net to take off. And that's why my parents did so well in the right. beginning. And then right. like once, the technology got better and yeah. bandwidth got cheaper yeah. and video became more prevalent. That's like when my parents weren't doing as well because they were really photo oriented, not video oriented. So right. then it kind of switched, but, but that you're right because I assume obviously as a movie company that, yeah, the beginning of the internet, you could be too early if you're yeah. really just talking about video. And, and listen to, to the guy's credit. I mean, um, I mean, not not Ornstein. Ornstein was willing to try anything, and 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 was a great guy. Uh, still is. He's not like he's dead. Uh, <laughs> still is a good dude. Um, uh, but there was this guy in the department mm -hmm. going, build it now, build it now, build it now. And I think unfortunately there was a couple bad business decisions mm -hmm. that prevented it from really going forward. Like yeah. the wrong guy or just whatever. I don't whatever drama was yeah. there but um but to that kid's credit or to that guy's credit he was right yeah ultimately he the, ultimately what i was doing was a was a niche thing that was just going to eventually go away yeah you know and and internet was what was really going to take over what year are we talking about when you're talking about like these bad decisions um i'm thinking uh early 2000s it wasn't bad decisions it was bad personnel i think was it one particular person? Yeah. Did his name start with an A? Yeah. You know he was my yeah. boyfriend, right? He was what? He was my boyfriend. Right? Oh, God, really? <laughs> okay, did not know. Yeah. Uh, but there... No, I, he was a piece of shit. <laughs> okay. He was absolutely the worst right. person I've ever dated. I was like 22 and he was like 33. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He was the right. The worst guy but, I've ever been with. But... It was just, it was shady. And then I think he got another. Because remember in the beginning, those internet guys were real fucking shady. Like, yeah. real. Like that whole crew. This guy was fucking shady. Yeah, that whole. My the, parents hated him. <laughs> hated him. Didn't he used to live around here? Yeah. Like right down the what? Yeah. Yeah. He bought a house off of Mahon. Yeah. Like right around here. Yeah, same guy. Yeah, so that was yeah, one of the bad decisions. And I think there were multiple. But, mm -hmm. of, but. Of that type. Yeah. Right. The wrong guy driving your fucking bus. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you hire the wrong guy to drive your bus. Yeah. Right. So, but, uh, yeah, so that was, that's, that's when that kind of took over. But, but, but when it did start going, I'd already moved out of DVDs. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the guys over at Wicked gave me everything. Mm -hmm. Like, Jonathan Morgan, um, God bless him, um, because I'm a whore and I love money. Mm. Okay, so I would work uh, every weekend. I would take vacation. I would like I would take vacations around Brad Armstrong's big movies, mm. or Jonathan Morgan's big movies, right? Mm. So I can work them. Mm -hmm. And I remember we used to do, you know, we used to do interviews, sit down interviews, put movie posters up, light it, do all that shit. And uh, Jonathan Morgan uh, said, hey, you want to shoot camera? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, I'll tell you what. You come work for me for free, for two, like two-day shows, mm -hmm. two two-day shows. And then I'll hire you as my BTS guy. Let's see if you can do it. Mm -hmm. There's this guy, Clark and Jake Jacobs. And they taught me how to shoot camera. So I learned how to shoot camera from shooting BTS for Wicked on the weekends and vacations. So those guys taught me how to do it. That's a great way to learn too, because it's kind of like, not not that BTS is dispensable, but like if you don't, you know, BTS also has that sense of like, it's okay if the camera's kind of shaky and it's moving around and it's like, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, to a, to a, to a to degree, an Better but, than but, but back then it was all, we were trying to make posh product. We yeah. were trying to be, 
oh, here's pro shit. So it wasn't just a camera running. It was as many shots as possible and creating your storyline. Like we were trying to really do it up. And, uh, you know, eventually it turned into a fucking, here's a GoPro on a fucking thing and just shoot whatever happens. And yeah. you're lucky if you get that. Yeah. But it was a production. It was, oof, we spent so much money. I mean, for me, like the BTS, whenever I watch, you know, big mainstream movies or shows that I really Mm -hmm. like, I love the BTS. Love it. But I think it's because we work in production. So we want to see like, what lights are you using? Like, how are you getting the shot? What's your equipment? That kind of stuff. Absolutely. I still enjoy it. In fact, um, there's a lot of uh, film schools and film academies that I follow on different social media platforms. And uh, they're creating content, which is very much BTS. And it's mm-hmm. like, this is how we, here's a sneak peek into what you can. Do you follow, I think it's Film Lights? Yes. Oh my and, God. And, and Film Lights is great. There's a bunch of them. Though they, Film Academy LA or some shit like they that. They post, some of those shots that they post, they have the biggest light sources. They're like yeah. 30 feet high. Yeah. It's just insane. And you just it's think, amazing. That took you two days to set up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just when you look at that and you see the insane amount of time and effort that the mainstream world gets to put into their movies. And then you think about like the budget and the time that we have to shoot the stuff that we shoot. It's remarkable that we get anything done. That's even remotely watchable. All of my mainstream friends are, are, are always impressed about how much we get done with how little we get to yeah. do it with. Yeah. I will say that like, to hire somebody who has a lot of experience in porn, you're gonna get someone who ha- can wear many hats yeah. and um, will work harder than like anybody else. That just happened to me. Um, I do dip my toes into the mainstream side, mm-hmm. um, usually with friends that kind of know mm-hmm. what I do. Uh, and uh, I, I sort of got, I, I did a you know, low budget movie, an action movie or whatever. That motherfucker had me a set photographer, drone operator, data. Um, uh, I was also uh, uh, B cam, not, not the B cam, but like second unit mm-hmm. type of stuff. I had like five different hats and I loved every minute of it. Yeah. Just because it didn't have some leaky butthole in my shot every. <laughs> You know, like there was no sex. There were no fucking limp penises. There were no leaky buttholes. It was magical. <laughs> Is that bad? Is that, that part will be cut out. No, no. Actually, I was almost thinking about making that the title. Like David <laughs> Lord, yeah, limp penises <laughs> and leaky, leaky buttholes. <laughs> oh, God. No, but it's, it, 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 um, I did, uh, I, I, I like to do it because Obviously, the product now has changed, right? I'm going to work, right, most of the time. Uh, and very rarely do I get to be really creative and, and have that freedom. Um, uh, but, like, I remember I, I shot this quinceanera, right? I was very nervous. Like, this this fucking girl's got whole fucking life is centered around this fucking event. And if I fuck it up, I'm going to crush this little fucking girl. Oh, my God. Ugh. Did a great job, killed it. <sighs> Thank you. Uh, and when I handed, when I turned in the content, I made the mother cry. She cried and said, "My daughter has never looked this beautiful. She looks like a princess in these folders." And that did something to me. I'm like, "Oh wow!" So sometimes I feed the good dog. Yeah. You know what I mean. Sometimes yeah. I like to feed the good dog and do stuff that maybe. I'm not really making a lot of money doing it just because it feeds that thing. Yeah. It makes you feel like value. Yes. There's value to it. Because that's the problem, I think, with shooting porn is that it's so disposable. Yeah. Right? You know, doesn't like, matter once anymore. your scene's out, it's like has no value. No, zero value. And people always ask me, like, oh, why isn't there more money in like selling porn, like merchandise or something like that? I'm like, nobody, like, people will buy like posters of The Godfather or like, you know, merch, mugs. People like, what really ask that? Yeah. Are these the same people that are going to walk down the street with? someone's butt or a half naked girl on their well, that's, shirt. That's, that's what I try to explain to people. Like mainstream has so many different ways to market and make money out of mm-hmm. movies that right. like, we don't like, no one's going to buy a poster of like 
a porn movie or like a commemorative well, now, t-shirt now, or anything like now, that. I think now, and, and I think there are companies out there that do it off of the whole grindhouse porno era. Mm-hmm. Like the Deep Throats and the Debbie Does Dallas, yeah. and you can buy those posters and whatnot. Yeah, but that's because it's remember like Slicks and old and cool. Do you remember Slicks? Mm-hmm. You don't remember Slicks? I don't think so. They were they were this big. Uh-huh. They were eight and a half by eleven, or eight and a half by twelve, whatever. And we used to sell porno, and we used to put we used to put them in like in a in a folder and go, here are my new releases for the month. Your mama remember them, uh, but that was. The back in the day, we used to send out slicks to people for mm-hmm. our new releases, so there was a little bit of that. But yeah, but there, there's no way you're you're not gonna. There is no product placement in porn. Yeah. Other than other sexually oriented type of things, like well, the opposite. Of- I'm wrong. <laughs> I clearly am wrong. Uh, but for the most part, well, there's right? the cool op- companies like Liquid Death. <laughs> They don't give a shit, man. Drink the water. It's good water. It's good water. It's sparkling. Yeah, it's, it looks cool. It looks like you're fancy. drinking in a tall can. Um, right? There's the opposite of product placement. We have to cover logos in porn, which is a fucking nightmare. Like, I will joke. literally go and scout locations, and it's it'll be perfect for my purposes. Mm-hmm. I can't shoot there because there's too much artwork on the mm-hmm. walls that we can't get a license mm-hmm. for, and we are not allowed to take it off the walls. Absolutely. Or there's just logos everywhere. Absolutely. Like, I can't shoot that. I've owned businesses that I couldn't shoot in. Yeah. Because there's just too much copywritten material. And yeah. I, 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 I do think, um, though, there are some companies out there that just don't care. Oh yeah, no. I've I know exactly what you're talking about. I'll see a trailer for a certain company, and they will showcase the Ferrari symbol or the Air Jordan symbol, and I'm like, like, is everybody else paranoid? And like, these people are like, dude, it's not a big deal, or like, I think no, no, no. They have a right to be paranoid. Like, yeah. people are still getting sued. Yeah. Right. Uh, there was a big company recently. They got sued are because we talking a about female the direct work and yes. yes. From a female director yes, and some and shady fucking thing on the other. But I don't know that to be true. But uh, a, a rumor has it that there was some sort of shady thing on the back end. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, that that happened. Wicked got hit hard. Yeah, actually, what, I feel like I heard about that. that. Jenna's built for speed, that car, the, the race car in that. Yeah. Yeah. That guy fucked Ornstein. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I believe there was back in the the one that started it all was Harley Davidson. Oh, really? Harley, da- they did a scene where there was a sex scene on a Harley Davidson. So that means that that leaky butthole that we were talking about earlier was right next to the Harley Davidson logo. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, and they didn't think yeah, no, they didn't think that was cool. <laughs> they didn't for some odd reason. They went maybe not good marketing there. So that was kind of the first one that I remember. Do you remember what company it was? That doesn't matter. So they sued the shit out of that company for their logo being prevalent in the movie. Yeah. And then there was a thing about how much screen space it can take up. Like you were mm-hmm. safe with, you know, because there, there, is, there is two sides of it. There's a, a, a public usage, mm-hmm. right? So like if you, uh, Michelin tires, right? How many times have you shot a car scene? You'll cover the Nissan in the hubcap, but those Michelin tires are... You can't cover you that. You can't cover that, there right? No table stick to that. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, so We've so tried. Bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Uh, but yet, that flies because there's a fair usage. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't put something out into the ether and not expect people not to shoot it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As long as you're not saying that Michelin tires endorses porn and right. you're not saying that, that, you know, you're not featuring the girls like, you know, right by the tire. And rah. There's something like if it's in the background briefly is like you walk by or something like it's OK or if it's like a third of it's in there. It's, there's it's, like, it's the, yeah, there's their screen yeah. size. Right. And then that it's are you using it as a uh, disparaging, which is up for debate. But are you using it in a disparaging way? Are you right. taking that Tide bottle and I don't know, beating someone with it. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> uh, but, but are you using it in a disparaging way or, you know, yeah. Louisville Slugger? Like if you were fucking to put a Louisville Slugger in, the, in a female, Louisville Slugger would probably be pretty pissed off. Yeah. Right? You would yeah. probably be sued because they're saying you're using our logo and you're using it in a disparaging way. Right. 
So, yeah. It's best just not to. I, I, I tell people all the time, they're like, you're covering up that little Vans logo on that girl's shoe. I'm like, it's just best to do it or cut it off. Yeah. Well, what I do now is a lot of times I just go and buy logoless shoes. And I Where? Downtown? No, no, Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah, you can get logoless stuff on Amazon. There's, there's a few places. I um, need a fucking container yeah. of men's briefs because... I, I don't know what it of, is. Every I dude, got a bunch of Brazzers. <laughs> really? Downstairs. No, but they say Brazzers on them. Every dude shows up and they go to take off their pants and it's Hanes. I'm like, dude, come on. I know. I come know. the fuck on. Like, you got to know better. You think? Yeah. Like, porn performers, you got to please go out and buy logoless clothes. <laughs> please, for fuck's sake. Don't show, don't show up with like, you know, with a little like, uh, what is it? The, the, Chanel? Or, or just anything. What's yeah. the one, the polo that always has something on it? Oh, no. yeah, polo. Well, the other one that people always wear, the less expensive the, the, one. The Izod? I don't know. Anyways, they're like, just put a piece of tape over it. Like, it won't stick. It's fabric. It'll come off Plus halfway into the scene. Like, it looks don't make stupid, me do that. It and it looks stupid. stupid. Like, come on. <laughs> All right. Just get a logo list. Like, go on Amazon and just get See, logo guys, list. This is what so. you guys don't get when you leave. And we're going, fuck. Please, just do it. Just do it. I'll hire you more. It's seriously. <laughs> it, honestly, it's like little things like that that, yeah. that people think about. And they shut. They're like, oh, I have all. Like, if a girl shows up and she has all this logo-less stuff because mm -hmm. she understands yes. that that's like what we need. And like she cares about yes. the end product. And she yes. cares about. Yes. Oh, absolutely. I'm like, I hire, hire you every every day. Yeah, every day. What is your, what was the. Okay, so I used to do a thing uh, in the DVDs for like Adam and Eve back mm -hmm. when I was directing for them called Porn Star Bag, where uh, the girls would come in and we'd open up their bags and rate them on how well their bag was. And Daryl Hannah, God bless her soul, was the best girl I've ever seen. Not only did she have each individual... Wait, Daryl Hannah? Hannah. The porn, the porn star Daryl Hannah. Who's the mainstream Daryl? They're they're both named Daryl Hannah. This oh, is like Cindy Crawford and Cindy with... because it's her real she name. She spelled it wrong. Oh, really? Right. Same with Cindy Crawford, I believe. Uh, that's her real fucking name. Yeah, it's kind of hard to come after people. You can't come after yeah. me if my fucking name is Cindy yeah. Crawford. What were we were saying? Um, Just so people know, not Daryl Hannah from Mermaids. <laughs> yes. Not yeah. Or the mermaid. For splash. For, splash. for 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 yeah, splash yeah, and some yeah. People know. Just okay. it's not the mainstream actress Daryl Hannah. It's the adult film actress Daryl okay. Hannah. Okay. She had a bag, and it, inside of the bag was each outfit, uh -huh. which was in a separate Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. and she had a Polaroid of her wearing said outfit in the bag. Oh, what? So when you That's lifted the kind it up, girl you need to hire. Uh, to do I don't know. She's probably, management. yes. Oh, yeah, right. But they don't exist anymore. She was the only one that was like that. The worst, no, typically, there, it looks like a bomb yeah. blows off. But yeah. was there anyone that you remember that was that? There was a few girls, and now, like, I'm having a hard time remembering. I think Brie Olsen was really organized. Brie was good. Um, I think Allison Ray. Was I think she had one oh that my like, god, Alice and Ray. Actually, Alice that was Ray. kind of like had multi shelves that I was really impressed. Uh, okay, with. so that's funny. Uh, yes, Jul uh, 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 Julia Ann, uh, and it was Lisa Ann and Julia Ann both taught me about the uh, the fishing tackle boxes, right? And there was also these little uh, plastic. Um, uh, containers where you could put all your accessories, your rings, your earrings, yeah. your bracelets and all that. And you could flip it over and all that. Oh, that was like a magical day for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was seriously, I was like, oh, to this day, I still use it. Yeah. Yeah. To this day, I still use, it. I still have in my production box, there's a box that's kind of like a tackle box mm -hmm. and it's got wedding rings and just stupid yeah. shit that you need from time yeah. to time. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Fascinating. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about David's directing career, um, crazy onset stories, and so much more. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. 
At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates. All right, guys, we are back. So let's talk about your directing career. We haven't, I feel like we haven't like really gotten into that. What was the first movie you ever directed? The first movie I ever directed was for uh, John Stagliano, like fucking gave me a movie. Uh, Trisha Devereux and I, uh, there, the, he had th th these guys that made um, this amazing art, right? Big boob, big curvy girl artwork and very much it was in the butt man magazine type of thing and they had very great ideas and just they were very smart guys and uh, but they didn't direct too well mm -hmm. very smart very talented i'm pounding on the fucking table again i'll stop that uh very smart very talented individuals but didn't really have a lot of experience mm -hmm. in, in making movies so he wanted to do butt man comics so we did, um, God, what was the first one? The first one I didn't direct. The, the second one I directed, which was Vault of Horrors. And uh, it was four little stories, you know, or five little stories. And that was the first movie I ever directed for them. Um, um, how did it go? Were you nervous or did you feel like... No, because I had, I had enough set experience. It was really just... And, and I'd been shooting camera a while. And, and again, I was around guys like fucking Brad Armstrong, Jonathan Morgan, fucking um, Michael Raven, um, uh, who else? Uh, just around guys that were like knew the shit. Mm -hmm. like they knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And um, so a little bit of that rubbed off on me. So I wasn't really nervous. Um, and uh, it was, it was a, it, they were fun stories. Like it was, it was, it was, it was a fun, uh, it was hard work, but it was fun. Yeah. Right. And that actually, it taught me how to edit. Which is so paramount to, I think, becoming a good director. Mm -hmm. Like if you can even understand editing or you mm -hmm. sit in the editing room with your editor mm -hmm. and they make you understand why you need to get this shot, mm -hmm. why you need to get that shot, it makes you such why a Why you can't director. cut from a wide to a wide or it looks, right. most of the time looks weird. Why B-roll is like so great to yes. just have to just stick in there when you need it absolutely yeah when i started to teach myself how to edit it definitely helped yes like, okay now i understand why i need to get this shot why this is mm -hmm. important like that kind of stuff absolutely oh sorry that was my stomach <laughs> it wasn't the water though um yeah no it's super it, like once you get that concept it makes the other side a lot easier yeah a lot easier yeah um yeah i i got my editor sucked mm -hmm. and I was just pissed and pissed and pissed and pissed and pissed and I'm like fuck this I'm gonna learn how to edit and I did and now now I can edit most anything yeah and that's like a that's like a real talent and it's, it's you have a talent that I'm jealous of that I can't seem to get right which which one? well, there's a lot. There's so many. There, there is there is so <laughs> there are so many. But like uh, photo photo editing, like like portrait skin. Oh, fucking ah! Thank like, you. Like I get all. I like I, I get it in it. theory. You know what? <laughs> it's just farming it out, aren't you? Farm that but, shit out. Okay, I will say though you that can do it. Yes, just because you don't. I don't because do it, of the I'm workflow, or because you're trying to get your next gig, or you're trying to. Yeah you know get a hard drive together or you're trying to lead your team so there's there's two things That's first so of all i do shoot in a way that kind of blows the skin out a little bit mm -hmm. so that it's already like easier to like mm -hmm. my raw content generally looks pretty close to the final product <laughs> depending <this> <laughs> <face>. depending <laughs> on the depending on the girl obviously right. um uh and then uh i also have a separate person who does color correction right and that I feel like makes a big difference too, because a lot of times when I see bad photos, a lot of times it's the colors not right. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, 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 I learned a little trick in teeth whitening that I was just like, oh my God, the, the, the sky opened up. Is because when you go into and you go into teeth whiten, it always gives you a real blue white, mm-hmm. right? And it looks like chiclets in their fucking <laughs> mouth, and it's just yeah. fucking horrible. That if you, um, you have to also change the color temp of that. So yeah. you have to add you know, orange or, or whatever, yeah. like you, you have to change the color temp of that brush stroke yeah. to make it fit whatever picture you're shooting. Right. And that was like, Oh my God. Yeah. It's like those little things, the little tiny things. So you have to actually add discoloration to the teeth to make it look more. Yeah. Normal. That always looks fake. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, but you can do that. I can't. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why you hire people to do it for you. <laughs> that's what I just learned that too. <laughs> I, I was buying some product from or. Uh, some equipment from this guy and I went down to his studio and we're really hitting it off and we're nerding out. It's very, part of it looks like this. Uh, And um, I was like, he's like, I'm really into shooting cars. That's my love, but I'm stuck shooting Vogue and all this. I'm like, bet you shoot Vogue. (laughs) And uh, I'm like, I need to talk to you. And he goes, what? And I'm like, I'm buying this Kessler slider from him and, and they don't use it because they shoot Vogue. And I'm like, dude, fucking photo retouching. How do you do, like, what course can I take? And he goes, stop right there. I don't do it. Yeah. And he goes, I don't fucking do it. Farm it out. Fuck that. Farm that shit out. Yeah. I'm like, thank you. Yeah, but the problem is is that it's if you get somebody who's good, they're expensive. Yeah, he gave me a couple tricks. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, but still, you know. Uh, if if you're doing that type of product, which I'm trying to do more of, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, listen, I want to get the the, the 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 basics down myself, so I know it, so I don't. I'm never in a position to where I can't do it. I won't yeah. to rely on anyone for anything. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I I I hear that's the key to that. Yeah. It's yeah. just fucking farm it out. I mean, definitely. Um, uh, What's the word? I'm spacing on the word. When you give other people jobs, you don't have to do it yourself. Farm it out. No, but there's like a word for it. Dangle the carrot. <laughs> it's like a... What? What's the word? Delegate. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck's sakes. Delegate. Yes. yes delegate. delegate. Ernie knows. De- all. I'm de- de- delegate. I delegate. I'm a fucking delegator. Yeah, that's a leader. Shit. That That is a leader. That, yeah. is, that is a true leader. Yeah, Someone that can delegate time. Yeah. No. Oh. Okay, so let's talk. Let's get back to you and sure. your uh, directing career. What's the most ambitious project you ever took on? Killer Bodies. It was the most. The, any, Is that the one that I shot the box cover yes, for? Yes. <gasps> yeah. ah! Yes, yes, yes. That was uh, the most uh, money <laughs> fucking any company ever gave me for one project. I have to say, because I was shooting a lot of box covers for Adam and Eve, they gave me so much money to shoot box covers. So much. We would Back make whole the... sets for a fucking box cover. Now it's like, get the box cover on set. Yeah. No, we used to get five <laughs> grand for a box cover or whatever back in the day and shit. Yeah. It was like, it was good money. Oh, more than that. Oh yeah, no. For, well, yeah, 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 no. It was amazing. Yeah, it was the best. They gave me over a hundred thousand dollars for this movie. Stagliano gave me the most money. Uh, well, actually, no. I think, I think the scene I just shot the other day was the most expensive actual scene because had so many moving pieces. But Stagliano gave me the most money for um, any one scene, mm-hmm. and Adam and Eve gave me the most money for any one movie, and it was a movie called Killer Bodies. It was right when Blu-ray was kind of coming out, mm-hmm. and I wanted... Did you ever read the Choose Your Own Adventure books when you were a kid? Of course. Okay. So I had an idea to do a Choose Your Own Adventure video. Well, the, the, the idea had been done before, sort of, but not to this level. So it was, okay, so the idea was you can have two characters, they can interact, this person go off and have sex with this person. This person go off and sex and have this person, or this person go off and sex with someone else. And you can make that decision of which person you wanted to follow mm-hmm. in the story. So you can rewatch this movie numerous times because technically, I think there were ten sex scenes in it. Mm-hmm. So you could, I don't know, do the math. A lot of different ways you can watch the movie. And I sold them on the idea, and they said yes. <laughs> Suckers. Were you happy with how it came out? Yes. And yeah. you feel it did, and it did well. Yes, I think it did well. They said that it did well. I mean, not not. 
It's hard to tell when you do tent poles. Yeah. Right? There's Brad Armstrong movies that still haven't made their money back. Yeah. But it got so much attention to the company and to the brand right. that you kind of have to have one of those every once in a while so that the lower level products sell and make money and, right. and right. have buzz, right? Yeah. So I, I hope it made money. I think it did. It was fun. I still got the car. <laughs> still got the car. So you've been in the industry long enough that I'm sure you have your share of crazy set stories. <laughs> yes. And um, I know that we would love to hear some. Okay. How, does it matter how foul they are? No. Okay. Celeste. Remember her, Vivid Contract Girl? Yes. She was married to Woody. Yes. Remember tall guy, kind of like a... Dolph Lundgren type guy, blonde, good Vaguely. build, right? Vaguely. So we're shooting over at Arrow Film and Video. Oh, okay, we're shooting, we're shooting at Arrow Film and Video, AFV releasing, and we're shooting uh, Celeste does anal. Mm -hmm. Somehow, some way, they got this vivid contract girl to do a scene for them at between her con. I don't know. So they're shooting it, and you know, leaky buttholes. They happen. It does. It happens in this so, business. Yeah. So they're on a couch and a leaky, there's a incident that happens where there's a little plunk that maybe happened on the, uh, on the couch. And these are all old Italian New Yorkers, right? So they're like, ah, fucking clean up that fucking couch. She shit on the couch. Go clean it up. The guy walks over, grabs a cushion, flips it over. He goes, fuck it, it's clean. Keep shooting. <laughs> Nowadays, oh my God, no. It's like, you take care of it, right? Yeah. But there was just, just it was, I was just like, really? That just happened? So that happened. Um, I always put fur like throws down. If it's a I couch that's porous that you can't easily right. clean, um, you know, like our typical right, pleather right. couches. Right. I have like all these different fur throws, like really kind of fancy different colors. I, I used to do them that. on, cause I can wash those. I used to do that, but then people would fuck on them and they would get little hairs all yes, over the body. Yes, that is the problem. And I kind of stopped doing it because yeah. I was just like, fuck. Right. So I'll give you, this didn't happen to me. Okay. But this is, hands down the most fucked up story I've ever heard on set. Love it. Okay. So, um, porn actor mm -hmm. goes to set. He's doing it a first time anal with this girl mm -hmm. and he's cool. You know, he's in the game. He's very excited. New, new, new meat, new, someone new to interact with. So, uh, so it's a white set with white, walls and a couch and a big white fluffy rug and uh the girl comes in she's beautiful and she's a little nervous because it's the first time doing it you know and, and hasn't really have a lot of experience and uh she's like well, what should i do and he's like oh sweetheart you should go in there and, and prep you know you got to prepare yourself for the scene and you, you know there there's there's douches and enemas in there and they have enema i don't know well, no, there's instructions on the side. So if you just read the instructions on the side. Okay. Is this that story that I've heard a thousand times that I'm not sure if it actually happened? It did happen. Okay, all right. Finish okay. your story, but I think so, I know where you're going I will this. tell you. This is like a I, famous story. I, in the this industry. is the best story in the industry <laughs> ever, right? And it did happen, and we'll talk about the players later, not on camera, because yeah, yeah, I'm sure or whatever. Okay. But literally, so he's, um, so he's doing like, I don't know, fucking mish, doggy, whatever. And everything's fine. She's very, everything's working out great. There's like good chemistry or whatever that. Then they go, hey, let's try pile driver anal. And she, you down with that? And the girl's, yeah, let's try it. Why not? It's crazy. It's crazy. He goes into her butt and he's like, oh, wow. Wow, this is. Wow, she, this very, it's like just wet and kind of lubricated. And it's just, this is really easy. This is nice. And he got a couple pumps. Have they been doing anal yet? No. Okay, so this is their first anal this position. This is their first anal in position. In Piledriver. 
And for those of you who don't know what pile driver is, look it up. But it's Google like that shit. you're on your shoulders, you're upside down, your legs are like behind your head. It's like the most you, uncomfortable. You're never position. doing it at home. No. And it's if you are, yeah, home. it's just it yeah. is what it is. So he goes into pile driver and he gets. <laughs> It's evergreen. I've been telling the story for 10 years and it's still funny. So he's still, he's going, he goes a couple pumps and he goes, I, Dave, I, I, I pull out and like a shit fucking geyser <laughs> comes out of her ass and goes, whoop, <laughs> flap, and covers me, the couch, <laughs> the poor girl, the wall, the rug, everything is covered covered in liquidy shit and he just goes yeah i'm 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 done um i'm gonna go shower really nice meeting you really sorry uh i'm gonna go okay so i'm gonna just go shower real quick and i'm gonna be gone and we call it the shit geyser story and apparently the girl didn't read the part where you're supposed to expel uh... and first off you shouldn't be using fucking enema porno girls you shouldn't be using the enema bottle just put water in it you'll be fine um especially douches uh but yeah apparently didn't expel the water and was holding that inner for for blowjob oral and two positions probably into third position okay third sex position so that wasn't the story i thought you were going to tell okay my story was the one where a uh, girl didn't know how to douche and she drank the douche instead of eating. <laughs> sorry that was very loud everyone, i'm so sorry <laughs> everyone tells that story and i'm just like i feel like that didn't that, happen that, I, I i've heard it a couple times yeah i've heard it a couple times uh there was oh god there was some girls back in the day that used to leave sponges in them for ex ex extended point yeah or like time forget right out. forget to take them out and you get on set and it's like you know unfortunately there's an aroma that's unpleasant and it's like i don't understand blah, 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 blah. and then you come to find out that they're um that they're they've left these sponges in them that are fermenting inside of themselves and you're just like Ugh. oh i just I remembered a great it's a great story for you those out of them yeah no so, yeah, so for we've those had of you to. who don't know yeah. um a lot of times if girls have to work on their period yes they will put a makeup sponge like a makeup wedge mm -hmm. up inside their vagina to absorb the blood so they can continue to have sex and if it's bad uh, multiple sponges yeah. yeah um and the problem is of course is that it can be pushed up there um by a, a large penis and be difficult to extract right and so sometimes yes they need help. which which reminds me of a great story a Love great it. story. Okay, so so just real quick back yeah. to the anal geyser yeah. shit. Yeah. Shit geyser. It story. happened. So as somebody who has done enemas myself, right? They are very difficult to get out. No, they're difficult to keep inside. They'll keep right. the water inside you for a right. long right. time. Right, right, Your right, 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 right. That's right what I'm saying. That poor girl's unless, fucking sitting there. Or unless you're really backed up, and you've got a lot. In well, there, apparently hydrated, so your body absorbs it. So that okay. Makes sense so it wasn't like a couple little ping pings. Yeah. Right. It wasn't like because we've had it before where you get like it happens. Yeah. It happens. Guys. Like a pee, like a like a piece or, or a pocket of water will come out, luby something or other, yeah. and sometimes you know you just clean up on aisle one, girl readjust. Yeah. This was a, a fucking <laughs> shit. Faucet came out of this girl's ass and it just literally blanketed the whole set in this. And yeah, so. <laughs> David, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yeah, David Lord, uh, David Lord on Twitter. Um, you Is can it find at me. David Lord? I think it's at David Lord uh, or David Lord XXX. I'm pretty sure it's at David Lord XXX. Yeah. And then, How do you not know your own Twitter handle? I don't really <laughs> it's an ish thing for me you know it's david lord ish uh, but yeah I, I i i need to start spending i need to start spending more time uh, worrying about that stuff i don't yeah it's hard it's it's a whole new i'm kind of on that cusp and i a lot of the social media stuff i don't post myself i have somebody else do it for me because mm -hmm. i just can't be bothered right
it's a lot. That's a lot of work. Like, I'll take the picture. I have the intent of posting it. Mm -hmm. I have so many pictures on my roll that I've just never posted because I just, I just don't go and do it. Uh, yeah, it's a thing. I'm going to be better. Okay. <laughs> so, David Lord, XXX on Twitter. Do you have an Instagram handle? Yeah, but I don't remember. It's David Lord. Just look for David Lord on Instagram and Twitter and you'll find me. <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram if you want to support this Patreon, yes, do it. this show, do go it. to patreon.com yes. slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you next week. <laughs>